Hi, it's Professor Adam. Let's talk about acids and bases with the theory of hard and soft acids and bases. In chemistry, we are often faced with somewhat contradictory or divergent trends. One example is the water solubility of various halide salts. Silver fluoride, for example, is much more soluble than silver chloride, with solubility decreasing going down the group. Mercury halide salts also follow this trend, but lithium salts have the opposite trend, with lithium fluoride having very low water solubility. Other diverging trends are different modes of ligand bonding and exchange kinetics. How do we account for these diverging trends? To explain these trends in the 1960s, Ralph Pearson described his theory of hard and soft Lewis acids and bases based on the polarizability of a particular chemical species. A chemical species is said to be polarizable if their electron cloud can be distorted by other chemical species. For example, this gas phase anion will have a totally symmetric electron cloud. But if we introduce a cation, then the electron cloud will be distorted and electron density will be pulled towards the positively charged cation. A soft Lewis acid or base is one which can be easily polarized and are typically large with low charge density, making them easily polarizable like the copper one cation, but they can also be molecular like quinone. A hard Lewis acid or base, however, is non-polarizable, or at least hard to polarize, and they are typically small and highly charged, like the lithium cation, but they can also be molecular, like boron trifluoride, BF3. Acid-base interactions can also be classified using the hard-soft distinction. Generally, like attracts like, as hard-hard and soft-soft interactions are preferred over hard-soft. If we take BF3 and ammonia, both are classified as strong. Ammonia is a strong Lewis base due to electron donation, and BF3 is a strong Lewis acid due to its electron deficiency caused by the electron withdrawing fluorine groups. They then combine to form a strong acid-base adduct. Soft Lewis acids usually have high relative electronegativity for metals, large radii, and low charge, i.e. plus 1 or plus 2. They mostly occupy the bottom right of the D block. Hard Lewis acids are generally the opposite with low electronegativity, small radii, and high charges. Due to the trends in size and electronegativity in the periodic table, the hard soft acid base classes lie in distinct regions of the table. This helps us to remember them. But remember, the oxidation states of metals can change hardness. Soft Lewis bases usually have low relative electronegativity for non-metals and large radii. Hard Lewis bases are generally the opposite with low electronegativity, small radii, and high charges. Due to the trends in size and electronegativity in the p-block, each type lies in a distinct region, which also helps us to remember them. The origin of hard-soft acid-base theory was purely empirical, based on observations of stability constants. It can, however, be explained if we consider electronegativities. Soft acids and soft bases have similar values, which makes them optimal for strong covalent bonding. Conversely, hard acids and hard bases have a large difference in their electronegativities that is optimal for ionic bonding. There is nothing preventing an acid or a base from being both hard or soft and strong or weak. The reaction to form phenyl lithium does not make much sense if we think both the product and reactant are soft hard combinations until we consider that the butyl chain is a better bronsted lari base than phenyl. This means that whilst a hard soft product is still formed, a more favorable pairing is found between bromine and the butyl chain. Let's check comprehension.